Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle East Courses 100. This is with Sangarava and also known as Sangarava Sutta, the link to the discourses given in the description. Another con context here is that there was, uh, Buddha was staying in the land of the Kosalans and there was a Brahmin lady named Dhananjani who was residing at, residing at that time in the same place and she was very devoted to the Buddha. She was expressing her heartfelt sentiments, homage to that blessed one, the perfected one, the fully enlightened Buddha. Now at that same time, there was a Brahmin student, Sangarava, who was also residing there. He was uh, young, but he had mastered the Vedas and he was he was knowing philology and grammar, well versed in cosmology. So when he, when he saw Dhananjani exclaim the praises of uh, Buddha, uh, he, 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 he said to her, that you are a dis disgrace. Though there are Brahmins more proficient in the three Vedas in this place, you still praise that shaveling, that fake ascetic. So the Nanjini said, but my little dear, you don't understand Buddha's ethics and wisdom. If you did, you'd you would never think of abusing him. So then, uh, and, and so he said, he, he said, okay, I'll go and check with him. So he went up to the Buddha, exchanged his greetings, and then he talked about this thing that... There are some ascetics and Brahmins who claim to have mastered the fundamentals of spiritual life, having attained perfection and consummation of insight. Where do you stand regarding these? So then Buddha talked about that there is a diversity amongst those who claim to have mastered. And this is coming in the earlier discourses also, that there are a bit different. Like one is like who do it by faith, then some by do it by oral transmission. Just because something has been transmitted, they transmit it. Some kind of think over that and accept it with logic and inquiry right then some accept with a view with consideration so there are others and then there are some people who have directly known this so whatever uh, the knowledge that buddha got he directly knew that knowledge he did not know it from a prior teacher or something buddha never ever said that he had a teacher he said that he is the fully realized one and i do not i do not have a teacher Right? Because the knowledge that he had gained at the Bodhi tree on the night of his enlightenment, all, all knowledge he had gained through his own effort, through his own insight. So Buddha says that uh, some ascetics, Brahmins, who have directly realized for themselves the principle regarding teachings, not learned before, before another, claim to have mastered the fundamentals of spiritual life. I am one of those. And here is the way to understand that I am one of them. So from here, it is basically Buddha is sharing his path, his learning journey from the leaving of the lay life uh, into homelessness, the time that he spent in six years, he met the two teachers, Alara Kamla and Udatta Rampatta. Then they could not satisfy his quest and could not give the answer to his question. And then he spent time mortifying, doing all the ascetic Jain practices and all the extreme penis uh, practices and realizing that these practices are also not relevant, not right. Then he decided to sit under the Bodhi tree and meditate and he got the uh, the knowledge of the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. He got the three knowledges, right? Uh, and then he moved further and then he started teaching the first discourse he gave at, Var at Sarnath, right? So that whole journey, uh, Buddha kind of shared. Now this journey I have already captured in Middle Discourses 26. Uh, Middle Discourses 26. It's a 26 minute long video where you I have discuss the same thing in detail so i'll skip it from here you can just type mn26 in the search bar on this channel and you'll get that particular video and there i have explained so this basically the the you know major major part of the video is uh, sorry major part of this discourse is on that only just that towards the end uh, 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 so subha understood and he was totally understood uh, the journey of the buddha and how he got awakened but Subha had just that one question that uh, must Master Gautama do God survive? So Buddha said, Buddha's response was, I have understood about gods in terms of causes. Right? So Buddha said, see, uh, Buddha's teaching is and what his knowledge that he gained was of dependent origination. That there is nothing which is a solid thing, right? Which exists permanently in this creation. Everything has a prior cause. So that prior cause, so it's like the chain of dependent origination. That means first there is an ignorance, then there is a contact, then there is a feeling, then there is craving and all these things. And then birth, suffering and death. So this whole 12 uh, kind of links are there to dependent origination. So, 
and understand one more thing that see buddha never ever entertain kind of metaphysical and you know those questions which are not contributing on the path buddha said that i know lot of things but i don't share all everything because buddha wanted to keep his students focused on the path to enlightenment so now this question that he had asked do god survive now this is again a question that is not relevant of a person's journey towards that's that's precisely why in buddha's teaching god doesn't form the central part of the buddha's teaching it's the individual and his suffering and how to get out of suffering how to come out of suffering and that is a person that has to be his relationship with his suffering and the practice and god doesn't have a role to play in that in other religions in other practices god is at the center and the, we are all at the you know side and it's like worshiping god or asking god from salvation from god in buddha teaching it is not like that right so buddha never said believe in god or not believe in god or whether god exists or not buddha not said buddha definitely did not agree on the concept of a creator god that i will come to the future in the future discourses but buddha buddha said that gods exist devas and the higher realms are there but the gods even those who exist in this samsara in the higher realms they are also in the suffering because why they are suffering is because in all the pleasures they know that they once their good merit is over they have to reduce to the human realm or the lower realms if they have committed mistakes this is fundamental why suffering is there is because of fundamental nature of this creation which is impermanence that everything is changing everything is cause based cause and effect based right so so buddha buddha answered it in one line he didn't answer it in detail not kind of you know quenching the thirst of that uh, uh, sangrava in much detail because it was not relevant to the practice so he said i understood about god in terms of causes so sangrava said but master gautama when asked god do god survive why did you say that you have understood about gods in terms of causes if that's the case isn't it a hollow lie so buddha said when asked do god survive whether you reply god survive or i understood in terms of causes a sensible person would come to the conclusion that god survive right so then buddha so then sangrava but why did you not say it in the first place so buddha said it's widely deemed in the world that god survive so my my kind of small understanding here is that it's deemed it's known it's known and understood that gods do survive but buddha was trying to highlight this importance that gods survive based on causes gods exist i understand gods in terms of causes that means they are also impermanent right in this creation so there is no like set permanent god which is sitting there right so that buddha said clearly said no that doesn't exist there is no concept of creator god that is there so this is it this is sangrava's this discussion with the buddha and he said excellent excellent it as if writing the overturned or revealing the hidden path he got a lot of clarity and he became a lay follower of the buddha for the life so this is about the uh, mn 100 uh, we have completed 100 uh, like middle discourses by this point and uh, 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 this uh, i hope this was useful do share your thoughts insights in the comment section namo buddhaya namo buddhaya